G'day, I'm Jamie Roberts, back to share another story with you on the gold rushes of Australia. In the last video, we had a bit of a look at how gold was discovered in New South Wales, how the government there had offered a reward for anybody who could find gold in the hopes of sparking a gold rush. Now they wanted to spark a gold rush in the hope that that would encourage more people to stay rather than leave for the gold rushes of California that had become so famous around the world. Well, Victoria, under the supervision of Governor Latrobe, did a little bit of navel gazing and decided that Australia's newest colonised territory shouldn't be left behind. With young hopefuls leaving first for California and now to New South Wales every week. Why was the Victorian government so worried? Well, like like New South Wales, a lot of the industry at the time relied on a fair bit of labour in order to succeed. The sheep industry, for instance, had turned Australia from a convict backwater into a giant sheep farm. But there was also the manufacturing industry in Victoria, particularly in Melbourne and around Geelong, that relied on cheap labour in order to be able to turn out products in any quantity. Here lies part of the issue that was to play such a big part in the Australian Gold Rush story leading up to Eureka. The governments of the day wanted to keep the poor poor so they would be more willing to do the hard work in order to keep the established classes prospering. The gold rush has changed all that with the working classes suddenly aspiring to achieve more than just a basic wage that was pretty low at the time, about 30 shillings a week or a pound and a half. Yep, things were a lot cheaper back then, but should you want to marry, buy a bit of land, build a house, have a family, six pounds a month was not going to get you very far at all. So with the economic fortunes of Victoria under a cloud, a group of businessmen got together and decided to offer a £200 reward for anybody who could discover payable gold within 200 miles or 320 kilometres of Melbourne. £200, cheap skates. The New South Wales colony gave Hargraves £10,000 for discovering gold and we're not even sure it was him who uncovered it. Well, unbeknown to the newly formed Victorian Gold Discovery Committee, a bloke named William Campbell had actually discovered gold on his boss's Clunes property in March 1850. Now, the station owner, Donald Cameron, decided to keep quiet about the discovery because he was worried that he would become inundated with diggers hunting for gold. Well, once news of the reward for discovering payable gold in Victoria was announced, a few weeks later, on July 8, 1851 to be exact, Donald Cameron decided to announce that gold had indeed been found on his property. Well, leading up to this announcement, a couple of fellows who'd heard on the grapevine about the possible discovery of gold at Clunes, George Brunn, a doctor, and his offsider, James Esmond, decided to head to Clunes to have a bit of a scratch around for themselves. Well, James Esmond had spent time on the Californian gold rushes, so no doubt knew a thing or two about discovering gold. Well, James and the good doctor discovered about 50 pounds worth of gold, and it was those two, along with William Campbell, who would share in the reward for being the first to discover gold in the colony of Victoria. Well, the cat was out of the bag, and the gold rushes of Victoria were officially on not long after July 1851. And I can tell you, things got hectic very quickly. I'll tell you more in the next episode of Gold Rushes of Australia for the Mine Lab Show. Thanks for watching.